And here we are. Welcome to another happy coding live stream here with my good friend Andy Johns. How are you doing, Andy? Hi. Yeah, good, thanks. You had a good week so far? <sighs> yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Playing any good games? Um, I'm playing Star Trek with, with you and that's right, yeah. Dave, <laughs> which has been fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, we've been playing Star Trek on Monday nights with the main man, Dave Velociraptor, our very own Mr. Scott. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been good, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've also been messing about with OBS and figured out how to get a better filter on my voice. So Mitsuyama, quality is more important than quantity. You are a quality audience. Well, you are, yeah. And speaking of quality, you are. what do you think about the voice? Is it better? Because like before, it was it should have been, a, I think there was a lot of background noise. So hopefully, this is better now. Yeah, yeah great. Okay. So... Um, how much i was going to say how much have you forgotten andy but i might, I might perhaps i should say how much have you remembered from before i i, I mean I'm, i think i'm getting there i don't the problem is i've not had time really the last week or so so to to do anything in between yeah but um It's definite. I think it's definitely sticking more this time. Yeah, I think it's just like as you say, we did something to like work towards that I can follow and and then just modify because yeah. that's that's obviously where I learn the best is by taking something and modifying it and <clears throat> yeah, you just learn by doing sort of thing. Yes, of course. Well, what I thought we'd do today is talk about talk again about lookup tables. Okay. Um, and I've got Asteroids RX here, which uses a lot of lookup tables. Now, basically, lookup tables, sometimes also called pre-calc, you know, pre-calculation. Yeah. In other words, what you do instead of having to sort of calculate mathematical values using code, you you write a routine. Well, normally what you do is you write a routine which calculates every possible value, right? Because yeah. with, with 8-bit maths, there's 255 possible values, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, as an example, instead of... Um, I don't know, multiplying by three or something, you could have a whole table. If you, it's like your three times table, right? Yeah. And you could just look it up. Now, obviously, three times table would be a little bit higher than 256 bytes. But anyway, I'm just... The, one, of the, one of the common things to do with um, a lookup table on the spectrum is to look up the values of for the screen right okay yeah so as you remember hopefully you remember in the in the previous one of the previous uh, th uh streams we had um we were going through and working on how the screen memory worked right and then you had like yes so that the high byte as you remember is either for the top third of the screen it's it's 40 to 47 and then for the next one it's 48 yeah. to uh 44 f and then from 50 to 57 right mm -hmm. but it's in characters so it's all laid out yeah. in characters right so if we've got um if we if if we want to have it so that it's say zero to two fifty five for the yeah. X and then um naught to one ninety two down 
then obviously we have to use some kind of lookup tables for that, which would give us an address. Yes. Um, yeah, like that. Now, hopefully the other thing that you remember is if we, well, I'm, I'm going to let me get the, um, let me get the ZX paintbrush up so we can talk about it a little bit more. And normally, the the re the really common way of doing it is to do is to use a lookup table for the y coordinate, right? Because as you can imagine, the y coordinate is the one that is in the wrong order, right? Yes. Yeah. So the x coordinate is 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 still linear, so it's mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot easier to figure it out. Whereas the y one yeah. goes it goes down eight, down eight, eight, and then like that. Da, da, da. So you, it's it's very common to use lookup table for that to find a particular line. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what you might have is um, values from from zero to one hundred ninety two. You don't need to go all the way to two fifty five because um, the screen isn't that doesn't have that resolution. So from naught to yeah. one ninety one, mm -hmm. you can look up a value, and then get a low a high byte and a low byte for the y coordinate, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, normally what you would do as well, though, is when you store that table, you would put that table, you would align that table to 256 so that the address of your table was the same as the address of your Y coordinate. Do you understand what I mean by that? Say again. So you would, you would set the table in memory so that the low byte of the address yeah. that you're looking at is going to be the same value as the value of the y coordinate itself. Right. Yeah. That wasn't a massively so. convincing right, but we'll we'll get we'll, yeah. in practice you'll yeah. see, right? <laughs> okay. So, here's the spectrum screen I can see that you can't see. Let me just get it up on OBS. We'll put it uh, somewhere convenient, right? Just a second. Add window Okay, so we'll start with with this, and we'll think about the Y. Okay, I'll put it here for now, and then we'll move it. Just remind me to move it out of the way. Yeah. You've disappeared there for some reason. Don't know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're not a priority, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, although it, it does concern me why that happens, but now oh, you're back again. Okay, so... Um, if you're watching on the stream there, you can see my radio DJ voice, Mitsuyama, says, yes, you see, I've got a very nice voice once it's been filtered properly, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I can continue like this. So, Andy, if you're looking, you can see the ZX Spectrum layout here. And uh, what I've done, okay, back to normal. What I've done is I've got... Um, I've got the attribute grid on so that you can see it, right? Yeah. And so you've got 32 characters this way. Yep. And you've got 24 characters this way. Yep. And as as we remembered, right? So when you when you're the, the way that the memory works here with the high byte is it goes 0 1 2 3 it goes down in the high yep. byte like that, right? And then yep. it all, but then the low byte goes is also part of the part of the equation because it's um, yeah. it goes from here zero then this one is 32 and this one is 64 and you know what I mean right 64 mm -hmm. 96 yeah yeah so the addresses for this for this column here the addresses are something like uh, four zero 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 four and then four one zero zero four two four three four four zero zero yeah and then once you get to here, then this address here is 4020, right? 20 is 32 in hex. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is rearrange that so that um, we can look up the values in such a way that it's easier to find the Y yeah. value, right? The X value is also a combination of two things. It's a combination of the character, right, which is going to be part of the low byte. 
address because this goes from zero to thirty one, right? And then yeah, and then again here from thirty two to sixty three, and so on, right? Yeah. So that low byte that will give you the character square, and then you also the final thing that you would need is a value which which bit that you were going to set. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's talk about let's get let's let's work with the y value first. Yeah, let's look it up so that we can print something on any on any line using a lookup table. So I'm going to get this lookup table up here on um, right. I'm just going to put this. Put, let me put this out of the way. And put this down here somewhere out of the way. Uh huh. That'll do, won't it? It's all right. Let's get it done. Okay. Oh, we got a few more, couple more people in. Hello, hello. Feel free to say hello. Shout out. Okay. So I'm going to take this look. I'm going to take the two lookup tables for the Y thing here. Yeah. I, I will send this to you. This is what I used in in Asteroids RX, right? Okay. okay. So this is our quick demo that we did last time. Just going to wipe that all away. We don't really need that anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. I'm going to take that, I'm going to remove this bit about the alignment just for now. Let me just see. Okay. I think that's... Just separating it out a, a tad, just to mm -hmm. figure out what I'm doing here. The difference with um, the thing with Asteroids RX is that it used it used it does actually use a 256 lookup table for the Y uh, draw, yeah. And oh. the, and and the reason for that. Is because it's 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 different in the sense that when when the ships or the asteroids are drawn at the bottom of the screen, you it then needs to look up what is below the screen and it goes back to the top of the screen and carries on drawing. Right. Do you understand what I mean? You know how an asteroid it wraps around the screen wraps yeah. around, yeah. Yeah, I, I get so, that, but I don't get why you don't just. Well, what I do is like when this when the when the asteroid is off the screen, yeah, yeah, it's given a. It, let's say when you're drawing it, right, you're going down line by line, and let's say mm -hmm. if you start at say 190, yeah, then you go to 191, 192, yeah, and then you hit 192, 193 as you're drawing it. Mm -hmm. It needs an address for 192, 193, right? And at that right. point, at that point, you tell it that's at the top of the screen. It's wrapped. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 wrapped around. You see? Okay. Yeah. Because you don't want to bother when you're doing things really fast. You don't want to bother testing it. Like, oh, <coughs> is it greater than one ninety two? Because otherwise, you have to do that on every single line right. that you draw. Right. So instead, you just you add a bit more to the lookup table. So that yeah. it looks up the values that it needs when it's drawing off, effectively off screen, right? Right. But um, for most games, you don't you don't really need to do that. But of course, if, if you're not careful, you do you, you do need to consider it though, because you could end up drawing into the attribute area, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in fact, 
it depends on exactly what you want to do but you might want to you might want to have your lookup table with at least another 16 lines of of addresses below 192 if you want things to um go off screen you know like if on agd if you try and draw the the sprite a little bit lower than um one nine you know half off the screen it won't it just yeah. it just disappears right yeah so yeah. If, if you want it to sort of go and you probably can't see me on the screen but if you want it to go you know above off the horizon like you know rise up above the horizon and disappear off the screen mm. then one of the things you could do is you could set the addresses if the coordinate if the y coordinate is greater than 191 you could set the memory address at say zero right and then that would just draw yeah. it into the rom and it wouldn't get written it wouldn't get drawn oh okay you see what i mean not really well let's say well your screen address right if you looked go right to the bottom of the screen you know you've got an address for each row each line yeah 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 I get yeah it. so what I you get do, that, I guess so, what I'm not getting it is so you the asteroid basically goes off the bottom of the screen yeah but at, at what point are you copying the data to the top no I'm not I'm not I'm not copying right? it I'm not copying it I'm literally using the lookup table you see the thing with lookup tables you don't need to do any calculation you just tell it what to do what order to draw in Right? right. So my lookup table tells it that if you're drawing off the screen at the bottom, yeah, right, draw it at the top. Oh. Yeah. All right. So you so you basically are like a duplicating that the top of the screen memory at the or the the top of the screen addresses at the bottom. Is that what you're doing? Well. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> yeah. Like, right, well, you know, I, I could say the screen size is not to 10, but after 10, I want it to wrap around. So we go, so the, the lookup the look table would be naught to 10, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 after that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's not it's not not to ten or one two it's it's a it's memory addresses yeah 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 right yeah, yeah. so well as an example let's say <laughs> let's say you know at the bottom of the screen you might have let's say right down the bottom you might have something like um, five zero f zero and then five zero f one right. And, and yep. five, five zero f two and, and and so on right yeah something like that yeah mm -hmm. and then when it gets to and, and then it would go down to five zero ff right yeah and then and so and that would be not that would be one nine one that would be address one nine one or something right that would be line one nine oh and that would be line 189. Do you see what I mean? Sorry, not one. Yes. That wouldn't be 190, would it? Obviously, that would be something like um, 192 minus 8 is 186. So it'd be something like that, wouldn't it? 184, 185. 186 and then down to mm. 191 right yeah yeah but if my sprite coordinate now it, first of all so it, when it's drawing let's say it has an it has a coordinate and it goes it, it uses this to know how to go down the line for drawing a sprite yeah mm -hmm. so it yeah. goes down the table like this so as soon yeah. as it gets down and then it goes down another le level it says well where should yeah. i draw now yeah yeah it's gonna go like it'll be here and it'll be say well yeah now instead of instead of that you want to go to something like um it'll be 40 yeah or whatever yeah. right you see what i mean yeah it'll be 40 so that, fo it'd be but, like something like 40 fo right and then 193 you'll be 40 f1 and so on yeah yeah 
it's like a table just to know the addresses but okay. uh, obviously we don't need that right um but uh, on the other hand also at zero if it goes from zero if the coordinate is at zero and then it goes above zero i also have another little a bit a little bit up there that tells it if you uh, if you're at minus one or minus two then you need to draw it at the bottom of the screen as well mm. you see what i mean mm -hmm. and of course the minus yeah. one and minus two is not 255 it's got to be jumped back to 191 or 190 because it's not a full yeah uh, line yeah hello scott yeah, perhaps I'm not explaining it as well as I could, but no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I get the, I get the wrap around. Well, you, the, thing, so you, the thing is, you don't really need it right now because that's for no. asteroids. You know, that was my that's yeah. the way. I, that's you don't. But just most just, games, just, you don't want that, right? No, no. But what if? So how do you deal with? Obviously, so your lookup table is gonna. Uh, so we, we, so we. We've gone down to the bottom of the screen memory, and then our lookup table uh, uh, 192 is starting at the top again. Yeah. Now, obviously, the asteroid is going to continue down the screen now. Yeah. At what point do you then jump back to the right point in the table? Because obviously, we've got duplicate entries in the lookup table that we're at now, aren't we? effectively yeah you have duplicate entries yeah but... so how so how do you know where to jump back to to continue it like when it ends when it gets to the end of the table yeah well when the... how does it know where to... well when it get well it doesn't it never needs to if you use a 256 byte table it, it never needs to oh because... it just wraps around yeah basically yeah i mean more or less i think so yeah right. Because it wraps around anyway at 255, you know. I mean, you can check it. Yeah. For, you can check it at, <clears throat> if it's greater than one. If the asteroid itself is, has, has gone greater than 191, mm. you, can, you can check it there and reset it to zero. You just don't want to be checking it every line, you know, line no. by line. Right? See, so, so where I'm having a hard time mm. is if this was the width of the screen. Yeah. Obviously, we've got two hundred and fifty-six uh -huh. um, pixels across, so two hundred fifty-six entries in our lookup table. Yeah, you're going to go to one side and then back over the other side, but because we're going top to bottom, we've mm -hmm. only got one hundred and ninety-two. Yeah, that isn't. How, I don't get how that wraps because you're going to go from zero to one nine two, yeah. back to zero. And then you're going to come down. You mean what? Six, 64. You mean on the on the horizontal from zero to two fifty five? Yeah, that that seems easier to get my head around. But if we go zero. Sorry, uh, naught to one nine two, back to naught. Yeah. But that's. But there you're coming. You've still got sixty-four entries in the lookup table to come down the top, bottom, from the top of the screen. Yeah. And now, but now, when it loops back round to the start, <laughs> I don't get how it matches back up. Yeah. Well, I, base. Yeah. Well, no. That's I understand what you mean. Yeah. So basically, once you get once the asteroid, if the ast once the asteroid has gone beyond its drawing distance um you know if it's being drawn if, if it's being drawn at if it's the drawing starts at 191 right yeah. then obviously it's going to draw down right but once it gets to 192 we can just reset it back to zero anyway before we even draw it Does that makes sense yeah but <laughs> I'm going to ask another stupid question. No, no, there are no stupid questions. Please, <laughs> If you're on. resetting it, why do you need the extra data in the lookup table? Because that's done, you use that for the line by line. So let's say, for example, right, uh, say I've got a big asteroid, yeah? 
Yeah. Now that big asteroid is 24 lines. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and if I start drawing that big asteroid at say 190 I don't know 186, yeah. Mhm. Mm well, I don't want to, and then I'm going to go to 187, 188. I don't want to check if it hits 192 every line that I draw because that's going to mean I'm going to do 24 checks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So instead, I just use the lookup table so that it has a, it just has a, like a little buffer that it can draw into and it, it just draws at the top automatically. Right? Which I get. Right. Yeah. But when I, but when I but when it comes to the when it when it comes to updating the asteroid right the coordinates of the asteroid not the drawing just the coordinates right when you when yeah. you when you do like your thing like oh the asteroids move down by one or something yeah. right well at that point you can just say yeah did you hit one ninety two yes it did okay go back to zero all right I get you all right yeah right? so. Yeah. Yeah, what you're doing is you remove the, the, the you still do calculations, but what you want to avoid is calculations during the graphics because there's no hardware support for the graphic draw, and you want it to be as fast as you can. Yeah, see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, good. Yeah. So who have we got? Row. Hello. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. All good. Hope you like the new fancy microphone filter that makes me sound like a really Sexy DJ. Now then, guys, let's continue. Right. Um, if I... Sorry, I was, didn't mean to point. That's a bit rude, isn't it? But <laughs> If you wanted it... If you wanted... Just to finish. If you wanted... When you go off screen, if you're drawing off screen, and you, yeah. and you wanted the sprite to just... You know, like when you fall off the screen, for example, right? It would work in a platform game. Yeah, you know, like it's it's not very nice, is it, on platform games when you go down, and your sprite doesn't go off the screen properly; it just disappears, and then you then you're in the new level. Yeah, yeah. And similarly, it'd be nice if the sprite actually fell from the new screen, right, line by line, like basically yeah. wrapping, right. So, yeah. um, what you can do is. With a lookup table, it's really easy because what you can do is is you can basically set anything above one ninety two address at something like zero zero, right? Because then it will it'll still draw it, but it'll draw yeah. it it'll draw it into address zero zero zero, like the ROM, you know? Right. And so and, and the ROM is read only, so it won't do anything. It'll it'll still draw but it it won't have any impact on the on the machine at all and so it'll just not okay. draw it see what i mean yeah yeah um what i did with agd because i coded something in agd to do that and i think jonathan did something <clears throat> similar right um but what you the other thing you can do is you can imagine that there's a th that there's an extra instead of three uh, segments you imagine there's a fourth segment yeah. Yeah. And that fourth segment is is in the ROM. So whenever you draw into that segment, it just it doesn't draw anything. Right. Okay. Yeah? So that's another way. Well anyway, let's let's go let's let's work with these lookup tables. So the lookup table is there but to help us to basically calculate the um the address that we want to write to yeah yeah now this one is in groups of four which i have to admit is not not very convenient but that's just the way that it the way that i generated it at the time so too bad um now you can see i've got y lookup l here and I've got yeah. Y lookup H here, right? Okay. So if I just if I just assemble it. Yeah. What's going on here? Hang on. That was very, very slow. Okay. So you can see here that 
this one starts at eight zero zero zero, right? Mm -hmm. And then here are the addresses of that table. And then here, it's at eight one zero zero zero, right? Okay. So the reason that so what we want to do, we don't actually need if we only need naught to one ninety one, then we don't need these these values here. Those are the one these are the ones that are used for the off screen. Yeah. Right? So one ninety two in sorry, one ninety one in hex is um I think it is it C zero? We'll just 191 is probably not C0. I think it's BF or something. Let's just check. Yeah, it's BF, right? So the highest coordinate that we'll need is BF. Is that clear? Yeah. Good. Okay, so we actually don't need... Yeah, I can you can actually see it here anyway, because you can see it going zero, zero, twenty two, four, six, eight, right? That's mm -hmm. a little thing. Yeah. There, right. So So we don't need that data there. Yeah. So I'll just comment it out for now like that, right? <coughs> but it saved us um It saved us about 48 bytes or something, right? You could use that for another lookup table. You see those bytes there. You could store yeah. something in there or you could store a little bit of text in there or, you know, whatever. It's like a little bit of spare yeah. memory. As long as you just remember where it is, you can use it for something. Right? So we don't need those last uh, 16 lines, yeah? Okay. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because... Yeah, um, yeah. Right, so, but what happens if I assemble that now? You'll see. Obviously, then, this address here. Sorry, I didn't update the. It didn't update, so. Just let me just do that again. Obviously, when I... Right, there we go. Right, so if you look on here, you see now this one, it starts at CO. Yeah. Which is not ideal, because that means that... Obviously, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go from CO, and then the address here is going to go to 4. So... Sorry, from to, to 81 here, 81. So you, you're crossing a, a line on the high byte, yeah? Right. Which we don't want to do because we don't want to if we're looking if we're gonna look it up and we've got yeah. zero to what ninety two, then obviously it's the address here, zero, should co yeah. correspond to our to our um coordinate, right? It's just gonna be easier that way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So with this one it's fine. But obviously here it's not it's not lining up, is it? Because if you go down a line, you're going to yeah. end up going on to another into a into an. It's going to go to zero, and then if you you're going to have to adjust the high byte address as well. Yes. You definitely don't want to do that, right? So what yes. you do then is you put in this here that that we call a line like this. A line, yeah. And you can do a line can be done with any number like a line two, a line. 32 lines, you know, it's going it to, yeah. if you want to sort of balance your addresses, but if I put a line, a line 56 in here and a line 256 in here, right? Yeah. Because we put, we're going to put some code up there, right? So therefore we, mm -hmm. can, we want that to drop down. Yeah. Right. So now when we, when we look at the, when we look at the, the byte here, then this this low byte of the address 
that holds our value yep. is going to be the same as our coordinate, right? Yes. So just to show you how that would work. So you give me a number between 0 and 192. 67. Okay. Well, give me it in hex. It's going to be easier, isn't it? Oh, God, I don't know. Well, 67 in hex is 443, four, I think. 64 is 40. 67 is 43, right? So 43 in hex. Happy with that? Yeah. So I so I start here. This is the y this is y lookup low byte, right? So I go to the address 8043, right? Yeah. And I go, okay, what's the what's the address? What's the what's the byte held at, at address 8043 and it's a zero. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And then I go to the other table. And I look at 43 at the same address. Yeah. Here. And it's 4B, right? No. No, lost you. Can't hear you. Yeah, no, I, I, you've lost me there. Okay, so you know that we're we're not we're looking we're using this lookup table to give us an address, and we're going to look mm -hmm. at that address to get a value. Yeah, yeah. So That's... I'm a, so I'm asking it, what is the address at eight o four three, and what is the what what value is at address eight o four three, and what value is at address eight one four three. Okay, right, okay. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So the first, this one, I know, all I need to do, see, see, all I need to do then, right, is I say, let me show you how you would do it in the code, right? So you start like this, load HL, um, Y lookup, Y lookup L, right? Mm-hmm. So that's pointing to here at the start of this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I would go something like load A Y coordinate, which, you know, will store our Y coordinate somewhere in memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I would just go oh. load L A. Yeah. Okay, so now do you understand that the address of HL mm -hmm. is it let's say let's say up here somewhere we've got we've got something called Y coordinate here, right? And we'll just we'll let's say that it's your number there, four forty three, right? Yep. Okay, so right now what what's the address? What what address does HL have? Don't know. I don't know. You've lost me completely. Not completely. HL here is equal to what? It's right here. Yeah? Where? <laughs> right here. The address is right here. There it is, eight zero zero zero. That's where the lookup table starts. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you get it, I promise. Eight zero zero zero. Mm -hmm. Start of lookup table for low byte. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we definitely got that, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. 
I just, yeah, go on, carry on. Now, what does A equal? Zero. What have we got here? Oh, okay. Yeah, A equals what? That, what was 67, isn't it? Yeah, 43, right? 67 in hex. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, and now after this command, what does L equal? Forty-three. Good. And so after that, what does HL equal? A O four three. A O four three. Good. Now load A H L, right? <coughs> Which means go to address eight O four three. Yeah. And get the value. Got it? Mm-hmm. Which is zero. Which is zero, right? Okay. Now that's like pick a card, there's your there's your low byte value, remember it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We're not gonna do anything with A, so we'll keep it in there for now, right? Yeah. yeah. Now we go ink H. Yeah. Yeah. Which means what? Go to the next Switch well, increment to high byte table, yeah? yeah. So we're going to switch to this one, and L is already forty three, correct? Yeah. So and this and this table is aligned with the other table, and that means that the value we just need to load it. We just need to load the value again, right? Okay. So in this case, all we need to do. And do we need the lookup table anymore? We, we don't need it anymore right now. Yeah? Right. So we can go like this. Load H, HL. Yeah? Yeah. And then we'll go load L, A. Right? Okay. Now, so A holds the low byte address, yeah? Yep. H now holds the high byte address. And then L now holds the low byte address because it was in A. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the final value of HL is going to be H is going to be where are we where are we here? We got 43. It's going to be 4B, yeah? Yeah. And the other one was zero zero, wasn't it? Four B zero zero. Yeah. Okay. So if I then go into the calculator four B zero zero, that gives us an an address of um sorry, that's not correct. That's odd. 4B00 in decimal uh, is a uh, 1919200. Yeah? Mm, yeah. Okay. So poke 1920255. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And you should find that that. Is exactly sixty three. Is that's that's going to be at sixty three? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, f in terms of a percentage, <clears throat> what percentage of that do you are you totally comfortable with now? I 
I think it's it's. I mean, I followed the code. But like increasing, swapping between the tables, I didn't get. I mean, I understand what you've done there to do it. You mean that's this, and why mean, the, and, you, and why they're six, the why that you know to, how we sync them up so that you just can just increment H by what by one. Yeah, and yeah. then because you want to go back because you they're just, stored in the, it, they're yeah. stored so that the. The low byte is the same, and you just need to go up or down to to get a different table. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like um. It's a bit like in a grid, you know, and it's and you just put them on the same coordinate. Yeah. And that's really important because, as you know, ink H is really fast. Mm hmm. Right. So. And those, you see, that is, that is a, that, you're not going to get a faster way of getting an address than that. I mean, that is super fast. Yeah, yeah. Super short, right? So okay. let's use that code in a little program. Yeah. To show how, <clears throat> to show how that can work, right? So, because Can you send me this? Yeah, I can, yeah. <coughs> All right. Okay, let's go demo. We'll call that a demo loop or something, right? We'll put that in there. Put that into there. Okay. Okay, just get bear with me, chat. I'm just gonna send this to Andy. Uh... Oh, isn't there something on Discord that I can do that with as well? I could just paste it into the Discord. I remember. So, uh, if I go to the Happy Coding Discord, <coughs> and then ah, stream code, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, I said upload it as a file. Oh, it's saying my message is too long. Oh. But I thought there was an option there to... Yeah. Send. I thought it would automatically send it as a file. <clears throat> I think you have to put it in there as a file. Because I've copied code in there before and it's just put it in as code. It was very short. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> all right, I just sent it on Facebook anyway. It's all, I figured that was quicker. Yeah. All right, you got it? Yes. Although it has, it has sent it as a file, I think. Automatically. What in Discord? Yeah. Oh, it has now. Yeah, it's just come through twice. Yeah, because I was getting mixed up what I was doing. So it's the same file twice. Yeah. So what what happens is when you paste it, it it, it actually gives you the option to convert it into a file. Okay. And it does it on the fly. All right. All right. So we're back stream. Sorry for that. All good. How are you guys on the stream doing anyway? I guess you're following this. I'm 
I don't feel I'm quite on on my normal. Uh, I don't feel like I'm quite on my normal high level of teaching. I'm not feeling it as much as I normally do, but it must be a little bit uh, out of practice. And that, Andy also a bit rusty, right? So <laughs> a little bit rusty. Let's, let's, I've, I've had have, I've had a pretty busy week at work, going back to the the London office and just so much on. So I just I feel a bit burnt out, to be honest. Sure, no worries. I need I need a holiday. Right. So let's <coughs> put Y coordinate in there, and we'll set it as zero for now, right? And we're going to do a little loop, aren't we? Right. So should we just do a loop where we just poke all the way down the screen? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if we do that, we don't necessarily even need to use a, a Y coordinate. We could probably just use, let's say we can use C, right? C we'll set C to zero. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And um, we'll set B to uh, 255 so that we do 255 lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just to make this even simpler, we'll set E to a pattern, say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll set HL to be the lookup table, right? So then all we need to do is, in this case, we don't need to get the Y coordinate from here. We'll just load L from C, right? Clear? Uh, we're going to load. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then we'll go, we'll still load A with HL because we need to keep that value. Yeah. Then we ink H, then we load H yeah. with L, then we load L A, right? Yeah. And then we can just load HL with E. Yeah? Pattern. Yeah. But if we're in a loop, and if we've done what we've done here, we're going to actually, we're going to lose our um, lookup table address, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to do this. Load D high Y lookup L, right? And then I'm going to scrap this one here. And I'll tell you so what what does this do? This now you know how this works. Load HL lookup L, right? Yeah. That means that HL equals, um, in this case, I think it's going to be something like 8100, right? Right. You sure? You remember where it's stored here, the lookup table? Yeah. In yeah, this example, yeah. in this example, it, it's stored at eight zero. But as soon as we start putting some code in here, you it's know, moved, it's, it's yeah. gonna we're gonna need it to move down, right? So it's that you know that because you've got that alignment there, that's yeah. that address going to be eight one now, right? Okay. Yep. 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 So that's actually what's going to be. I mean, you know, it depends where it is in the code. I mean, if we yeah. add more code, it might move down. But for now, that's move what that's going to yeah. be, right? But okay. what you, what you can actually do is you can do this as well, right? You can go load H, you don't need to do this, but for example, high lookup L, load L, low lookup L, right? 
So you understand that lookup L is a 16 bit address, right? It's two, two, two bytes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. when you, but if you only want, if you only need one of the bytes, yeah. In this mm -hmm. case, we only need the high byte, right? Because the low byte is going to be the coordinate. So we only need the high byte at this point. So what we can do is load D with, with the um, high byte of, the, of L, right? Of, okay. Of white. Do you see what I mean? I think so. So I'm just remembering where the table is and putting it into yeah. D. So that that yeah. is just quicker because then at the start of the loop, I'll just go load HD, right? Yeah. So that just means start of lookup table for low byte, yeah? Yeah. And that's good because then, you know, I've messed about with H here, increased it here, and then I've set it to something else, right? Yeah. So in this case, it'll just get reset back to what it should be at the beginning. And then HL here will be low byte of of V, and then the high byte will be the coordinate. Yeah. So that means I don't need to mess about. Now, let's to be honest, I'm using all the I'm using all the registers here to do this. And you're probably gonna need those registers for other <coughs> things in, in that in a real game or something, yeah? Right. There's a question from Mityama. Is there ever a benefit to calculating a lookup table when your program first runs rather than hard coding it? Um, well, it's, um, well, yeah, it, it's possible because you might, I suppose you might have a need for a different table, you know, a certain, okay, lookup tables take up memory, right? So I suppose in theory, if you wanted to use the memory space for a different lookup table for a different part of a game or something, right? Or then you might you might want to be able, you know, you might want to generate an, a lookup table on the fly to um to do that. Yes. And then use it for something else, use the memory for something else like a buffer or something, right? So yeah, you might, you, it might be a kind of way to save memory, but then you'd have to, um, I'm just trying to think there's some, well, one of the, it's not exactly the same thing as this, but um, one of the things that in, in Donkey Kong, what happens, right, is that the, um, the sprites are actually drawn uh, left to right, then right to left, like this, right, in a kind of snake pattern. Because obviously you don't need to keep going back, right? It's a bit quicker if you draw them like that, yeah? But when um, when you're... So ideally, you know, you'd, you would just store those sprites um, in that order, right? In that kind of zigzag order. That, But that's not very um, human-friendly in terms of when you're working on the sprites and editing them. So um, in in this case, what I what I do is I actually reorder, use some code to reorder the sprites just when the game starts, right? So that means that when I'm working on the graphics, I'm still working in a human readable form, and then I'm using some code to reorganize it. So my answer, <laughs> my convoluted answer to Mitsuyama's question, would be. Uh, potentially, one reason might be to save memory. Um, but another reason might be if your lookup table is not very human readable and you wanted it to be human readable and then you reorganized it or something like that, maybe. I don't know. But it, it, there, might be, there might be a reason for that. But um, Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. So that's our lookup table. That's our code. That's really, really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of these are, you know, this one is like in terms of um, what they call T states, right? Four T states is like the fastest. That one's four. That one's four. I think that one's seven. That one is four. That one is seven. That one is four. And that one is seven, I think. So it's really, really fast. 
Um, anything below 10 is really fast. So yeah, right. So then what we do is we'll use our um, DGNZ to demo loop, right? DGNZ is decrease B and return to demo loop to address well, uh, well, what we do is we set the program counter to demo loop if b does not equal zero, right? Remember that? Do you remember DJ and Z, Andy? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. And obviously, we want to increase our coordinate as well. Yeah. Yes. And then we just ret it. Okay. So we should be able to then go to here. Let's look at the code actually. Before we before we do it, let's look at the code. Right, there's the code, yeah. One of the things I want to draw your attention to on this, Andy, is do you see you see this DJNZ? Do you see how it's two bytes? Yeah? Hmm? Yeah. And do you remember that the jump remember the jump jump relative? And yeah. if it, and if it that's a negative value, F six, it means jump back about this yeah. many bytes, right? So it's going to be yeah. about it's it's about eight bytes, isn't it? So it's going to yeah. go back to there. You see, that's so. Yeah. If you're going to use DJNZ, you you can't. You, it can only go back a maximum of 127. So it's for short loops. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, right? Okay. So let's load the code and then we'll look at it more closely as it's running and think about how it works. Okay, so I haven't a clue where um what the where the code is. Hang on, it's quick demo, projects assembly. Yeah, all right, I think I can find it. Uh, quick demo bin. There it is. And we load it at 32768. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then we go. So I've got the error. There. Bam. Got it? No, I've got an error. And how could you have an error? There's only about five lines. You tell me. What's, what error is it? Oh. It's complaining about the device because the top left and top because where I pasted it in, it's not tabbed the first line. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, all right. Yeah, cool. I can't remember, right? If we we put a halt in here, did this did this cause it? It didn't like it, did it? If we put a halt in, I think it got completely stuck. But anyway, we'll try it. We'll try it and see if it likes it or not. I think it's just going to get stuck. Yeah. Yeah, 
I, I honestly don't really know how. I should really ask David about that. Why it is that it just gets completely stuck and it doesn't. Um... Oh no, it wasn't stuck. It wasn't stuck. Look, it was just that I hadn't cleared the screen, right? Look. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, apologies. Right, so there you go. So halt means every time that you run the the routine, it waits until the next scan line, right? So yeah, that's why it's really slow. We only need really we only need one halt there, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> but what we can see from this is that the because we're now we're working in a totally linear memory now, right? Yeah, it's much, much easier to do other things. So for example, here, we could start C at 255. Yeah. And then we could go deck C instead. Yeah. Yeah. Deck C's midnight runners. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, and then Tell you what, right, let's just, before we do that, let's add a little bit of code, yeah? You see here when we're setting things up. Yeah. Okay, so what we could do is go load HL 4000, DE 4001, ODC, uh, what is it? What's oh. the size of the screen memory? I always forget. Six, well, it's 6143 anyway. Well, I can't remember what it is in hex. Um, something like 300 and something. Okay, yeah. So 17FF. <coughs> what for like pixel, number of pixels on the screen? No, no, it's just the size of oh. the memory, right? So, oh, okay. Do you, do you remember what this is, LDIR? Mm. Well, basically, what LDIR is, is... It basically does this, right? It's the equivalent of doing this. Load. Um, of course, you can't actually do this, but this is what it does. It does all of that, right? So it it copy. It's a it's a way of copying a block of memory to a node, okay. right? right? So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the value zero at the into the screen memory here yeah yeah and then I'm setting this loop to be the full screen memory and I'm putting de yeah. to one byte ahead so it's always going to be copying from from it's copying zero to address one and then it's going to copy address one to address two and address two to address three, right? And it'll just basically clear the screen. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. It's like a block copy. All right. It's a way of copying from, and the reason this is 1817FF, it's one less, because obviously you don't need to copy the very first byte, because the first byte is already zero. Like you've, you've done that one byte already. Yeah. Yeah. So all that's like basically that that is a, the way that you can clear the screen. It doesn't clear the attributes though. Yeah, is that clear? Fairly reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, you could. There are other ways of clearing the screen. There's like a ROM one you can use for clearing the screen. There's you can call it in the ROM, but I don't use the ROM so. Anyone else? No questions? All good? 
Right, let's go on. Yeah, so that just means I don't have to press CLS, you know. Incidentally here, because C is 255, I could um, set B to be the same as C now if I wanted. I think B should actually be zero because it should be 256, not 255 anyway. Because it's from zero to, yeah? Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you look now, what will happen if I run that, yeah? Let's go. And obviously I'm slowing it down using the halt. Um, <laughs> it's starting. That was odd. That was odd and unexpected. What's happened there? Why is it starting from... Very weird. What have I done? Made, made a mistake. Must have made a mistake somewhere. Could be a mistake in the address, right? Could be could be the lookup table. I'm not sure. Oh, <coughs> of course, because C's should be 191, not 255. Oh, yeah. Right? So, um, yeah, obviously. So that first bit was just reading some, some stuff from somewhere else. Yeah. Probably the previous lookup to the table or something. So, yeah. So obviously not two fifty five. We haven't got any allowance for that in this code. So now we can go from here. Uh huh. There you go. Right. Ta da. Seems to be a bit of um, bit of a delay at the top there, though, doesn't there? You know what that? Means? Yeah. There. Look. What's that all about? Ah, I, you know what that is. Because B also the loop for B also should be one ninety, uh, one ninety one, one ninety two rather, right? Because it's we only need to draw 192 lines. We're not drawing 255, are we? You see what I mean, Andy? You there? Yeah, yeah. So the loop, the loop also needs to be 192, not 255. Yeah. 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 So then, now we can start playing about with it, right? So you remember, um, you remember we we know how to invert, yeah. So we could invert it like this. We could go um, dex C. We could go load A E, and then we could go C P L, and then we load E A. So that just is going to invert the bits, yeah, every time. Yes. And then, so then you'll get this, right? So then you'll, we'll, we'll go like this and then we'll go here. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yes. Okay. Good. So that allows us to plot on any line. Yeah. Using a coordinate value of naught to one ninety two. Yep. And if we want to print, if we want to print that at any other value, then actually all we need to do is add 
a number from 0 to 31 to it. Right. Clear? Yeah? Yeah. Because that would go from, we just add, add from 0 to 31 would give us any character square. Yeah. Across, yeah. right? Yeah. So we can just add 32 to the to the value to the, well the x coordinate value whatever it is mm. yeah we can we well okay let's go back to the screen and I'll we'll talk about this right so if you have a look at the the screen here I'm gonna if you look on the stream right I'm gonna increase the street the screen this one right yeah. okay. so if you look at this now if you want to print across here you can find any character square from 0 to 31 right yep so all you need to do to add uh to find any of these character squares you've already got the address on this line so you just need to add from 0 to 31 here right yeah but obviously if you've got coordinates of 0 to 255, then you're going to have to divide it by 8. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now, in Asteroids RX, what I did, instead of dividing it by 8, I actually used a, div a division by 8 lookup table. Right? Okay. I mean, it is pretty quick to divide by 8. You just need to rotate it to the, to the uh, yeah. right three times. Right? Yeah. But... Your if if you do that you 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 know you're still going to have to kind of mess about with the registers a little bit. Whereas if you put mm. another if you put another lookup table in, you can literally just find it super quick, right? Right. But for now, let's not let's not do that. For now, let's just work in character squares, right? So from naught to thirty one, all we'd have to do then. All we'd have to do to go from 0 to 31 is um, at this point here, right? I'll take this bit out for now, right? So we're gonna we're not gonna have the the bit where we're changing the pattern. We'll f we'll figure that out later, right? Yeah. But what we want to do here, obviously, is we want to go. We need another loop, yeah. Yeah, can you move the screen out of the uh, way? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry. Thanks for reminding me. So we'd need to put another loop in here. All right. From zero to thirty one, yeah. Yes. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that we can do it, but one of the easiest ways to do that is to use the stack. Okay. Now, are you ready to learn about the stack? Probably not. <laughs> Go ahead. The stack's really, really easy to understand. <laughs> Honestly, it is really easy to understand, right? I'm skating on the edge at the minute. <laughs> I'm going to keep you on the edge. I promise. <laughs> right? I promise. Now. Okay. So, let's imagine we've run out of registers. Yeah. And... So the next, the option that we know so far is mm -hmm. to um, store the values in memory, right? Yeah. But that's a little bit slow. Okay. But what we can do is we can use a special part of the memory, which, is res which we can reserve for slightly yeah. faster storage for the CPU to access yeah yeah and that we call the stack okay right and the stack 
is essentially imagine it's like a cupboard right with where you could where you put some plates okay so let's say you've got and each plate has got an address each plate holds an address right yeah so you can tell you can assign the stack to a position a place in memory wherever you want it to be doesn't matter yeah you can put mm -hmm. it anywhere you want normally in basic it's set somewhere out of the way it's not going to cause any problems for us and it's a register also called sp stack pointer right right um and it's basically just used for temporary temporarily storing addresses okay or 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 it, not just a, it, each each it can store two bytes at a time right so it can store hl it can store bc it can store um de and it can even store af as well right mm -hmm. so all you do it's 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 really not that difficult let's so in this example right because we want to do a loop yeah yeah we are going to we need to use bc again right okay and we need to and then we need to get back what bc used to be before so that we can remember it right so what we do mm -hmm. is we just put it in the cupboard right okay so the bc put it in the cupboard like this push bc right all right okay and that basically puts bc into the stack okay now the thing you have to remember about the stack is whatever's at the top of the stack is what you get back when you do a pop yeah right so that puts it onto the stack it doesn't change bc right now bc is still the same value but you've just said remember it right take it remember it stick it in the cupboard yeah right when i need yep. it back i'll tell you right so okay for example i could put bc into the into the cupboard i can put hl into the cupboard i can put mm -hmm. de into the cupboard like that right but what, yep. but what you got to remember is when i do a pop yeah yep. it's going to bring back whatever value was the last one that was in there okay so if i do this if i do say if i do this push bc yeah. pop de right then de will now have the value of bc you see okay that makes sense yeah so it's like put that in the cupboard mm -hmm. And then take it out again. When you and when you take it out again, you have to tell it where to go, what value, where you want it to go. All right. See what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. And it's like, and the reason I said like a cupboard, it's like plates. It's because it's like stacking a stack of plates of values. It's like a stack of values, and you only so, have and you only have access to the one that's at the top. So what happens if you want to get one that's further down? Then you have to basically pop a couple more times until you get the one you want. Okay. Yeah. And the right. other, and then the other thing you have to remember is that it, when you go back to basic, you got to make sure that your stack is balanced, right? Which means that you've got the same number of pushes as you have pops. Yeah, which means like whatever you've taken, whatever you've put in, you've got to take it out again. Because if you end your code and you've put something in the stack and you haven't taken it out again, then the memory is not the same as it was and it'll it'll cause a, a crash. Right. Huh? Makes sense? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So it's just, for now, it's just a really handy way of storing a value that you want later. Stick it on okay. the stack like this. So, so what it means is this. I, and it's this is a good practice. Normally, what I do when I do a push like this, I'll write down. I'll make a space and then I'll write pop here. Yeah. Yeah. So that way, I know that I'm going to get back the value that I had before, right? Yeah. And if I leave that like that now, mm -hmm. that code, this this code. Well, let me show you, right? So, for example, 
if I go in here now, if I load BC with, say, I don't know, FFF, yeah? Like this. And I run it, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to completely ignore the load BC FFF. Absolutely, yeah, because it's 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 shielded. It's 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 shell shelved, sort of hit. It's like like yeah. isolated, in mm -hmm. because of the stack, right? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So you know, I mean, it is a bit. You don't want to use the stack if if you can avoid using the stack, then then you know do because if you've got registers oh. that you can use, then use them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. But for the for the for this sake, you know, I've kind of done that sort of deliberately, where I've looked, oh, we've used up all the registers. What we're going to do, right? We're going to need to we're going to yeah. need a new B, and a, we're going to we're going to need a new B at least, right? For a loop. See, so what I can do here is I can go like H loop, right? Horizontal loop, right? Like this. And then I can say, okay, um, load B 31. So it's going to be 31 bytes, yeah? Yeah. And um, we're going to put this this bit of this drawing bit in here, right? Actually, it's going to be 32, isn't it? So not 31. Load B 32. Load HL with the value of E, yeah? And then ink L, which is go one across, yeah. And then DJ and Z H loop, right? Mm. Right. So do you know what that's doing? So yeah, we are. What have we got on the E? Oh, well, the pattern in E. So we're putting the pattern in, then we're... So we're basically drawing across the screen until we get... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, what's the problem with this, though? Um, it's moving at eight at a time, isn't it? No, it's drawing. It's going okay. to draw the line across, right, and get to here. But once it gets to the next line going down, it's going to be over at thirty thirty one uh, instead of zero, right? So it means that it means that L is because we've been inside this loop, yeah. We're messing about with L, aren't we as well? See? Okay. See what I mean? Is it clear? I think so. Because yeah. yeah so what will happen is it will just start draw. It'll it'll then start drawing on the next bit down. It won't. It won't yeah. be at zero, right? So yeah. there are two. There are two things. Two things to do. L needs to be reset. Okay. So you know, one of the things you could do at the end of the loop here is you could go uh, load a L, yeah, sub thirty two load L A, right? Okay. Make yeah. sense? Yeah. Because you've done a loop of thirty two. Yeah. So you just go, you go back. You know that you've you know you've added thirty one all across like that. So you, and at the yeah. end, the very last one is added thirty two because it's the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Go back. Just do that. You could do that if you wanted. That's one option, right? Yeah. Easy enough. Another way that you could do it, rather than sub thirty two, is you could do an and like this. Right, and that'll reset those bits, and that's resetting the, the 32 part of the byte see what i mean 
Yeah. That, that part is 32, right? Do you see what I remember? Yeah. Binary? Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. another option. It's another way you could do it. And a third way that you could do it is you could preserve your address here and pop it back here. Right? Because then, okay. then what you're doing is you're protecting HL yeah, that, as well as yeah, BC, yeah. right? And just remember yeah. when you do that. So the stack is very often the stack is a way of like isolating a small part of the code, allow you to use the registers and then put them back to what they were before. Gotcha. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You see, it's not that tricky. Yeah. You just have to remember to do it in the right order though, right? So push, yeah. push BC, push HL. So your stack, if you imagine you've, put, you've taken your BC, you put it in the cupboard, you've taken HL, you put that in the cupboard, yeah. right? Yeah. And now yeah. HL is like in the stack, HL is on top of BC. Yeah. Like stacking, right? Yeah. So when you go to the stack again, you're going to take the one off the top, which is going to be HL. And that's why here we put in HL back, yeah? And then we yeah. put in BC back as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. obviously, there are, I mean, there is, there are all kinds of other th things you could do with that, right? You, if you want to, you can pop, you know, you can, you can put something on the stack and then pop it into a different register if you want, right? Okay. You might have a reason for doing that. And, and another thing that's, that, that's common in, in code, it, it's, it wasn't designed for this, right? But, as you can imagine here, what you're doing is you're moving you're moving two bytes at once here. So it's actually quite quick. So yeah. what, what some people do is they even they can put the stack onto the screen and then push data onto the screen and it's actually the stack is in screen memory and you'll get whatever is in the stack visible. Right. But it's um yeah, that's people use that to do scrolling and things like this, right? Because it's really fast in demo coding and stuff, but you don't need to need to worry about it right now. All you need to think about is it's, it's a way of, um, what would be the word ring fence? It's like a ring fencing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you just ring yeah. fence it like that and you go, yeah, look, I'm using B here and I'm using L there and I'm using E, but I'm not changing it. Right. I'm not changing E. So that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all fine. And that's a loop inside a loop. That's how you do a nested loop really. You just use um, like that. And, and you can even go, you know, you could go another level down and have a second loop, less nested loop as well. Yeah. You can use it as many times as you want, as long as you remember where you are. Okay. And, and as you learn, you know, you'll, you'll get to the stage where if I look at, say, for example, in Asteroid Direct in here, right? So, um, Okay, so say for example here, you see I've got push HL, call newbie, pop HL, yeah? Yeah. What I know is that the when I call when I call a beep sound, um I want to I want to ring fence HL so that it's it doesn't get changed by the beep code. So I put it like that. Yeah. Right? All right. Okay. Now one more thing though, you see the stack is limited. It's absolutely fine here and it works and it's ring fenced, right? But one of the thing the other thing you have to remember is um we talked about jump, right? JP and it changes PC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you've also seen that there is also a thing called call, right? Yes. Okay. Now when you call, it's like go sub and return yeah yeah so when you do a go so when you do a call it changes pc to whatever value you want the code to be at yeah okay and then it does a return so how do you think it knows what address to return to What do you think it does? What do you think the piece, what do you think the CPU does to know 
the address you were at to return to when you when you make a call to another place. What? Did it look at the pointer? Well, yeah, it looks at the program counter, but it needs to store the program counter, right? Right. From where you were. Right. So what useful place that allows you to store addresses that we've just been talking about, do you think stack. where you th it stores it? Yeah, it puts it onto the stack, right? So right. you got to remember that when you use, if you're using a call to, to something, yeah. you're also going to put something onto the stack. Right. Right. And that means then that, oh, here's a little cat. Hello, little cat. What do you want? You want to play? You coming up here? Huh? I thought you were, I thought you were in the bedroom. I thought I'd shut the door. You coming up? Yeah, you are You're coming up, aren't you? She'll be here any second. Start playing with my <laughs> She's gonna be just I'm gonna have to adjust this. One second. There we go. Just put it put the microphone cable under my shirt as a precautionary measure. Right. As a feline precautions. Come on then, you can come up here if you want. Anyway, um, yeah so what you can't do is like put something on the stack and then you know call make a call and then try and get the thing back from the stack because you've already yeah. you've added something into the stack right so yeah. i mean there are ways around it but it's fiddly so you that that's one of the limitations but in terms okay. of this ring fencing it's it's easy it's no problem right and if yeah. you, i mean you can you can call something you can call something here and it's fine as long as you return to here. Because once you've returned, the stack will be balanced again. Right. Okay. It's just if you're in the middle, if you're in the code itself, right? You remember I showed you on you remember I showed you on here where where I had a call. Yeah. yeah you see, look at all look at all this. Push, 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 push. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you see this one? It pushes here and then it does a call and then it pops it again right yeah and so i didn't i didn't do that inside of the beep routine just because um i wanted to keep the stack balance separate from the routine itself you see what i mean yeah so as long as it comes back to there then you're all right but it's just something to bear in mind but the stack is not that tricky i mean you know you can do some pretty fancy stuff with the stack once you know how it works but but that is more or less the simplest thing you do you can just use it for ring fencing some code and you can use it therefore for nesting a loop and other things like that all right guys i hope you're all following that so um yeah so what do we do we store the loop counter right Store the screen address. Uh huh. And then she's she's finding a way. She's gone up the up the window, round the side, <laughs> and across. And she will shortly be making an appearance. Yeah. Where are you going now? Straight across. You're gonna go straight across the camera over the keyboard, aren't you? Huh? Of course. Let's give her a chance. Oh. Come on, Alice. What are you doing? She's just smelling the screen. Just can we just Is she in view yet? I don't think so. Let's see. <laughs> she will just turn up any second, I'm sure. Anyway, so I've adjusted myself now. I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> back to normal. Have you ever had these little cat lick things? I got her a cat lick thing. It's like a little ball, and you stick it onto the side of any of a. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mine, mine completely ignored them. Oh no, she's mad! Absolutely mad! For yeah, it. yeah. Right. 
just couldn't be less interested. Oh no, she's she was biting it and everything, trying to you know, <laughs> and it comes with a little cap, and you can stick the yeah. cap over it. Might even open it now and let so she you know, stuff like that. You can't she can't be in there. You can't be in there. Just a second. No, yeah, exactly. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come up here. Come on. Just a second. Come and say hello to the audience. Hey. There she is. Hey. She's very, know, <coughs> she's very tiny still, huh? Aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> You're still a little baby, aren't you, really? Yeah? A very bitey will. A bitey girl. Right, what are you doing? Are you going to sit there? All right. Anyway, um, yeah, so obviously our delay there, that halt routine here, yeah, <laughs> is... Um, is outside of that loop so that should be that means it's going to draw a line and then so we should get something like going all the way up right we'll see anyway yeah Doing everything one handed now. <laughs> right, there you go. Yep. Easy. Yep. And if we were to put back our little routine on E, yeah? <laughs> what was it? Load. Load, Load A, A. E. CPL load E A. See, I mean, doing a, doing this kind of what do you call it? Is it stipple or is it just? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a mil million times easier on because you're in. It's all linear now, right? Mm. Like before, it was like figuring out how to go the, to the next line down and whether it should be a pattern or not. Remember, we messed about with yeah. it. So when you're doing lookup tables like this, it's going to be a um, piece of cake, really. <clears throat> yeah, cool. does my head in looking at that. There, see? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, actually, I've got it up quite, quite big on the screen. Right. I'm just looking at it, that shimmer effect you get off of it. <laughs> oh, just... yeah, well, if you, it depends on the <laughs> screen. My eye in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so but just to give you an, I mean, just to give you an idea as well, I mean, look, you, you know. Take... Retro, retro Aries made a comment there. Oh, Is there okay. a reason as to why you wouldn't have preserved your registered in the beep subroutine rather than doing the push, pull, push, pop? Oh, in the, in the previous, yeah, because, um, well, I'd have to remember, but um, it, I only did it when it was necessary. Like in some, at some points it wasn't necessary, so it would have, it's just quicker, you know? But with that particular routine, with the thrust, it, you needed to preserve it, right? Whereas in other, in other instances, it, it wasn't necessary. So, you know, made it quicker that way. I could have, yeah, I could have put it inside the beat routine itself, but, um, as you know, the processor gets slowed down by beeps anyway. So I think that's why I did it. I don't remember exactly, but. Um, well, you're going to be sad. I am. Well, you're not. But... Why, have you crashed it or what? No, no, Star Trek Discovery's just been canceled. Oh no, what a disaster. <laughs> Oh, what a disaster. What a shame. It should have been. Should, have, should never have been bloody done. Stop it. You're so disingenuous. I am. 
Well, there's so much hype over it and everything. And then, I know. no, listen, I've got to say, I just could not forgive. I will never, from the first series, I will yeah. never forgive them for what they did to those Klingons. That is just unforgivable. What they yeah. did. It's just, as, as a Star Trek fan, as a as a generally as a Klingon fan, right? That what they yeah. did was dis, it was a disgrace. Yeah. Right. If you wanted to look, if you want to have, you know, some mad villains that are, that eat humans and do all these other things, right? And are just, you know, fine. Then create a new a new um, enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. That, like because you understand especially look the klingons weren't very well developed in the original series right? no. no and they were almost even a little bit comedic in places but once you got to um deep space nine the klingons were massively developed with a whole yeah. culture and a whole and there are whole story the whole their whole episodes yeah. when it was just pure klingons it was just a, Kling yeah. a Klingon episode, you know, like the one where they went to look for the the the, the albino Klingon guy. Yeah, and, and and all of that, you know, and and like the whole Worf arc, story arc, and the honor and the thing and the Kalos and all those other things that they did, and they just threw it all in the bin, like in such a disgraceful way, and made them look terrible. And it was just like, ah, how? What have you done? Yeah, here? it's really bad. <laughs> it was really like I'm I'm just. I just, just, yeah, just, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't forgive it, right? And I tried, and I watched the second season as well, and it was also they, they just tr tried to pretend that they'd never done it, something. Yeah, and that's just yeah. th that just keeps happening though. They they do a se a season, and then they pretend like nothing had nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And the only the only. I watched season two, and the only thing I would say about season two, I didn't mind it because Captain Pike was interesting. Yeah, he was. You know, but Lorca, yeah. Lorca, Captain Lorca was really interesting as well. Mm. And again, you know, I'm Star Trek has always been ahead of the curve in terms of casting women and you know people yeah. of different ethnicities and everything else. It's always been way ahead of the curve in creating interesting characters, right? So whether it's in, whether it's Worf or, you know, uh, Kira Norris or whoever it might be, you know, strong, interesting yeah. characters, well-developed characters, you know, it doesn't, nobody yeah. needs to lecture Star Trek about that, right? No. Because it was doing it 20, 30 years ago mm -hmm. or before it, before it was cool, right? And Star, and, and Star Trek fans have always admired that about the show, right? Because they, they've and they've always done it in a way that's just matter of fact. It's like, yeah, well, it's the future. This is what it's like now, right? Yeah. And it's never felt there's never you've ne you never felt like it was that there was somebody Force. in the background or for. And so when you, and when you start forcing it, right? What happens? Yeah. What happens is it's just like you're suddenly reminded that it's a show. You know, you're getting into the story and you're enjoying it and everything. And then it's like, oh, yeah, there's a writer. This is the writer here. This is what I'm doing, right? Mm. And, it, and it really breaks the immersion for me anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I I love that Star Trek does um, has always had this kind of um, history behind it for, for quality um, characters, regardless of what what race or gender or whatever right i mean okay you know i'm sure that people in the gay community can argue well you know that they, they never really had that and you know there were times when star trek did it within within you know they did their best to try and do it within you know what they what, what the big companies were allowed them to do yeah um and I'm sure that they would have done more if, you know, it's, it's always to do with like sponsors and everything else like this, isn't it? Like they go, oh, no, we can't do that because of our demographic and blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> you know, but it's still driven by the demographic now, right? The, re yeah. the Those choices are being yeah. driven 
that think, well, we need to put the lesbian here, we need to put a trans person here because demo, our, our, our viewership that we're aiming for will be really annoyed if we don't, right? Yeah. It's a bit of a shame, really. But, um, yeah, I'm all, I'm, I, I don't, I, I think that in the same way, you know, when I teach English, you know, meaning is everything. And, and with, a, with a show, the story is everything, right? The characters have to be everything. And it's absolutely fine, you know. Um, I, I would never judge a character on, on, on anything other than the quality of them as an, as an interesting character in the story, you know. And um, if, it, if, their, if their sexuality or their race or whatever is, comes into the story, that can also be interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's, a hu it's a, on a human level, isn't it? So yeah. it's like you can understand. I mean, you, we've all missed out on things because of where we're from or who you know who we know or whatever. It, it does happen to everybody. We can relate to it. So. so yeah, I thought it was a bit of a shame though in Discovery that um, yeah, the guy Lorca was he was a really interesting character. He was, yeah, and and he was very kind of grey, you know. He was ethically grey. Well, I mean, because that Lorca that we met was from the Mirror Universe, right? Yeah, yeah. But then, but then in season two, or at the end of the season, or maybe it was—I don't know—they just turned him into like, oh no, yeah, he's just a total bad guy loser, mm. right? And as soon as you do that, it's, not, it's also not very interesting anymore because it's just, yeah, we're all brilliant and that guy's a loser. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then and then the whole thing that they do, and they did it with, they did it with Picard as well. They're like, yeah, oh, let's do this because that'd be fun. Let's, let's, let's make this story this and we need Q to do this. And it's like, no, you, you, you don't seem to understand. These characters have been developed over years yeah and they've grown and that's why what an amazing asset to have right mm -hmm. but then they're like yeah well we just want them to do this because that'll be interesting right you know and and it's just oh your mic's just gone weird oh it might have switched over to the to the webcam i'm not sure i was i wanted to uh put the cat on the camera but okay Let's see. Has it gone? Has it stopped? Is it back? Yes, yeah, back now. All right. Well, I won't mess about with that. Strange new worlds. Well, yeah, you know what? I started watching it and I thought, oh, yeah, you know what? This is pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. You see, I watched, I don't know, I'm sure you've watched like, um, the cage, right? Have you seen the cage? Yeah. So that's like the pilot of the original series before Kirk. Yeah. And it's quite an interesting show. And the character of number one, mm -hmm. played by Majel Barrett, it's quite an interesting character that was never really developed. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and the same for Captain Pike. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Captain Pike, obviously, we, we, you know, we found out a bit about what happened to him in the original series. But, um, so those two characters are really interesting. And to develop them um, is good. And I think they handled Captain Pike pretty well. <clears throat> but, again, this sort of thing came in with Captain Pike where he's like, uh, well, what should I do? And then everybody else tells him what to do. You know, I couldn't. I mean, you know, look, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I start. I, got, I kept getting this feeling, which was like, um, Captain Pike is like the white guy at the, in the middle, and he's the boss, but he doesn't really know what to do, so he's got to ask the the black people and the and the gay people what to do, and he doesn't know what to do. It kind <laughs> of uh, that was that I got a bit of that vibe from it, right? <laughs> which okay. is. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm reading too much into it. It, it kind of felt like that. The other thing I would say about um, 
because it's just a little bit of too much agenda you know they should just be good at what they do and then they should be people and i don't care what 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 people they are makes no difference to me I'm, i mean it's great if it's more diverse it's brilliant you know it's really yeah. really good i fully back that up but if you're going to do it then you've got to give the you've got to make them really interesting characters and have yeah. them really well developed because otherwise they just become their own they become stereotypes or they become like their own um it starts to feel like they exist for what they are instead of who they are you know yeah so um yeah so she's basically sitting on my knee like a kid like literally like with her with her with her paws up like this and and sitting and just yeah she seems very very content anyway um i'm tempted to kind of pick her up a bit and put her on my shoulders she doesn't like it she's very happy where she is but i'm gonna free up my go on can you go up here can you go can you can you can you sit up there? Ay, ay, ow. This is not working. <laughs> so okay, all right. You can sit back here then. All right, you're back where you were. You're back where you were. All right, okay. Yes. You're back where you were. No problem. Um, How are we doing anyway? Let's get back to this. Enough of my... Uh, Ranting. All right, I'm putting you down. If you're going to bite me, you're going down. Right. You're going down. You're going down. You're going down. There you go. Whoops. You okay? That's enough. That's enough. Go on. All right. Um, yeah, but, it's, but Strange New Worlds does look quite interesting. And it looks like the characters are... Um, going to be a little bit better developed i don't know yeah. Let's see. are we are we done i mean are we doing anything else with this code because um i did want to run it. i just i just ran it there i've just removed what i've done is i removed the halt right so that uh -huh. you can, yeah you can, yeah you can see how fast yeah, I mean, yeah, and, it's, and it is almost like clearing the screen. It's very instantaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is fat. It is fast code. Yeah. Um, and we could mess about with a few other bits there, you know. Um, I think next time we'll look at how we can get pixel, pixel to pixel, right? Okay. Yeah, it is. It's almost instantaneous. I mean you could you could you could sort of mess about with the um the pattern on the screen you know maybe I don't know Yeah you could just um come in and well you could instead of doing instead of changing e like that you could maybe it just ink e so that it it cycles through a whole load of values then you'd get a, get a, a slightly more random effect, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Oh well, yeah. Can you see that that's the the shapes that you can see there are, are actually the binary from from a, you know one two three four five or whatever like yeah. it's like each time it's yeah changes yeah 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 cool I wonder what I wonder what would happen if we um put the CPL inside 
the loop inside the nest inside here, right? I don't. I think we get light vertical lines with of different with a, with a thick line every. Let's we'll see. The main thing to take away, though, is do you, do you feel like you understand a little bit about how lookup tables work? Yeah. Yeah, I was right. That's like a barcode, thicker lines, and yeah, that's what I expected. <coughs> and then I could actually stipple that by putting another one in there. And then I think for now, well, in terms of the kind of games that we're going to write, it's going to be easier to use a lookup table because we're not going to need the memory. Yeah. But someone mentioned um what was Rectory was saying? Oh, it was better when they went to the future because it wasn't interfering. Yeah. I think um and Scott saying it was it has a bit of an answer. Yeah, well you know that in three in the three D um in the 3D games that you see, they often use effects like this, fill effects like this, you know, to, to fill areas. But, um, yeah. So, well, and anyway, Andy, what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to play a couple of games or do you want to call it a night? I think I'm going to call it a night because I'm... Yeah, fair enough. It's quarter past like five it. here anyway. Yeah, all good. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was useful we'll continue that next week and we'll look at getting yeah. the you know control over the actual granularity in terms of the pixels right so mm -hmm. using that you can see now that we've got 0 to 192 and 0 to 32 yeah. across that we can control yeah. right so we should be able to plot a pixel pretty easily yeah yeah that's the is the easiest way to do it um, mm -hmm. you, you can use another a third lookup table. I mean, I, I messed about with a few things. I can look at the code like a really like the fastest plot that you can do using three, uh, four lookup tables. You know, one for the two for the y, one for the x, and yeah. then, and then another one for the pattern as well. Okay. You know, but that's mm -hmm. like then you're using a, more memory to do that as well. But yeah. Um, Still. Okay. All, good. <coughs> All right, mate. Well, uh, let yep. me close the stream okay. down first. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining today. It's nice that we had, an, you know, the usual little crowd in. Good to see you guys. We'll see you. Um, if you guys fancy it, right, if you're around on Monday, same time on Monday, Andy and myself and Dave, the Velociraptor from This Week in Retro, as you might know him if you watch that, um, we are playing Star Trek 25th anniversary. So if you are a fan, obviously you guys, if you are Trekkies, it, it seems most people that like old games are also Trekkies, aren't they? So um, <coughs> we, it was basically, that was the thing that we watched on TV after when we weren't playing video games. Um, then come and join us on Monday because we'll be doing that again. We've done two episodes. The first, the, it's it's um, episodic, right? So the first one we did off uh, offline. We were going to go online, but we couldn't get it working. The second one we just completed, and you can find that on Twitch if you want to watch it. It's still there. We kind of bum bumbled our way through, and the the audio quality on my microphone was terrible. Um, I was really loud for a bit, so we've improved it now. So the next time we play, we should have uh, 
we should have that sorted. And I think uh, this weekend I'll have to try and beat those Romulans so that we don't have to go through the space battle part because it's really boring. Um, but if you guys want to join yeah. us, it'd be be great because you know we don't we're not, we're not looking for a as as Mitsuyama said we're not looking for a quantity crowd but a quality crowd is always welcome. And yes. if you guys can you know chip in with a few ideas if you haven't played it before, um, we haven't played it before so. And we've been meaning to play it for 20 years probably um and there is and then we're going to go through that one and then we're going to go through judgment rights as well which is the sequel and then we'll probably if 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 it keeps going we'll go on to um uh final unity which is the tng point and click which yeah. i which i have completed but 20, 25, okay. 25 years ago i completed it so it's like you know um yeah I, I don't remember anything about it really how to complete it so and then after that we might i'm not sure what we'll do after that we might go on to indiana jones or uh the point and click or we might do another one i don't know i just Sounds bought I, I just bought mist oh yeah and uh riven yeah i actually completed riven which is the sequel to mist and i really really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun actually and the reason it was fun is because I played it with a pal and, and we figured a lot of stuff out. Right. On um in Riven, there's um they've got like a a number system. There's, there's like a language and you don't know what the language is and the numbers, you don't know what it is at all, and you have to you have to, you have to work it out from the context. Talks. And you go, Oh, that's a four, that's a five. Oh, hang on a minute. And then you know, we worked out that they yeah. they were using a they were using um, a base five instead of base ten, and it was it was a really cool thing to figure out. But I enjoyed it. Um, <coughs> all right, guys. So yeah, I think it's good to finish, not not to go on for as long as we have in the past. So take care, and I'll see you guys on Monday or on Thursday. And as always, happy coding. Take care. Oh, hang on a second, Alice. You want to say goodbye? You coming up? You coming up to say goodbye? Come on, come on, come on. Here she is. It's good night from me. <laughs> and it's good night from she. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.